Let's talk about some Linux and open source news from the last week. A lot of cool developments going on. Let's first talk about Ubuntu and its migration to the Rust core utilities in 25.10. Canonical plans on going forward with the transition over to the Rust core utilities. So with Ubuntu 25.10, there's plans to transition from the traditional GNU core utilities to Rust based core utilities, aiming for a more modern and potentially safer system tools. The change will be tested ahead of Ubuntu 26.04, their long-term support release. They do, however, have fallback plans in case the Rust-based core utilities don't work. You could always fall back on the new core utilities that are based on Rust. Now, one thing that's not great is that the Rust core utilities are actually larger than their new counterparts, which might lead to potentially increasing the size of images, especially for things like Docker containers. But it will be quite the migration process as they mentioned here, migrating core utilities to a new package is an arduous task, as it is a central package that which has a requirement. One, it must work with merely unpacked files, must not disappear at any point. And two, it must not conflict with other essential packages and files shipped at bootstrapping, merely extracts them, and then does the proper unpacking runs. Having the same files in multiple packages would lead to undeterminate results. They also cite related Debian work being done. Debian is working on the same, but sort of the opposite, namely supporting Toybox and BusyBox as alternative providers of the core utilities functionality. To provide smaller minimal images, the scheme has been proven to work with their experiments. This is a critical shift towards improving Linux utilities by using Rust, or at least that's the thought here. With Ubuntu and its influence, and how many users use it, it could influence other distributions to adopt Rust core utilities and Rust code in the future. It's a significant step towards using Rust in the Linux ecosystem, as there has been quite a conversation of whether or not just to leave C in the Linux kernel, it looks like distributions are going forth with trying to use Rust in their environments. We'll see how the migration plays out for 25.10. But now to move over to a goofy bug that caused boot times to be over 10 times slower. FreeType has implemented three patches that are now going to significantly improve startup times when loading fonts with complex open type features. Think like Arial TTF. Previously, FreeType was being slowed down by inefficient code that called a function as quoted here 66,954 times while loading the particular Arial Dot TTF font. That would significantly increase the startup time by up to a factor of 10, which was unacceptable, of course. These latest patches replace the slow algorithm with a more efficient low-level approach, which will definitely decrease the amount of startup time to just a fraction when handling alternate glyph forms of fonts. As it says here, the new algorithm uses completely different, more low-level approach, no longer working with open type features, but with open type lookups. It relies on a function, HBOT layout lookup get glyph alternatives. That's a mouthful. Also replacing recursion with a simple loop. In total, this brings additional startup time back to acceptable range of a few percent. A side effect of the new approach is that it catches more alternative forms. The old code didn't properly handle the script specific features. To make the change more readable, this commit only adds new code. This is a crucial fix for improving the performance of free type, which is widely used in text rendering in various applications. This change will benefit overall users in Linux that are using free type based applications. Hopefully they'll be becoming more responsive and I'm glad that this bug was caught and fixed. And since free type is a foundational library, desktop environments and applications all use them. So things like GNOME and KDE core components could be affected by this. LibreOffice, Inkscape, GIMP, all sorts of web browsers, operating systems, and applications that we use day to day. Again, this is a significant inefficiency that was discovered with the free types previous algorithm and failed recursion when loading certain font types. It's going to be quite the benefit. Speaking about benefits, take a moment and subscribe below for more Linux videos like this. YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't want to miss another one. Also, make sure to smash that like button for me. Let's talk how Valky is set to replace Redis in the extra repository under Arch Linux. Arch Linux is replacing Redis, which is an in-memory key value data store system widely used for caching and real-time analytics, session management, so on and so forth. The big deal here is Redis is shifting its license from BSD to RSA LV2 and SSPL V1. Valky was backed by the Linux Foundation 
and by other various tech vendors, will now take Redis's spot in the Arch Extra repository. There's going to be a two-week transition period here, and Redis will no longer be updated in the AUR Extra repo. Arch users are being encouraged to switch to Valkey, so you should be thinking about that. Valkey is a high-performance key-value data store and will be replacing Redis in the Extra repository. This change is due to Redis modifying its license from BSD3 clause to the two we've already talked about, RSALV2 and SSPLV1. So there's a 14-day period after this post is 17th of April. We're getting close to that time. Arch Linux package maintainers intend to support availability of Redis package for roughly 14 days from the day of this post to in enable a smooth transition of Alki, which honestly is not a lot of time, but it is an important transition as it reflects a growing trend in the Linux ecosystem to move away from new restrictive licenses. Clearly, Arch Linux here aligns with open source principles while trying to ensure compatibility for its users. And since tools like Redis are modifying its license, it's good on Arch Linux to be thinking about these types of things where open source licensing is more important than the tool itself. Quite a significant move for Arch Linux as licensing has been talked about many, many times in the Linux community. And it's very important to use free and open source licensing for many people. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Are you surprised? Is Arch Linux doing the right thing? And speaking of surprise, Fedora 43 has announced dropping GNOME X11 packages for the Wayland only GNOME. The idea here is Fedora 43 is planning to drop GNOME X11 packages completely and making it a Wayland only GNOME experience by the end of the year. The summary here says remove GNOME X11 packages from the Fedora repositories. All users of GNOME X11 session will be migrated to the GNOME Wayland session. A big deal here as Fedora aims to streamline the GNOME desktop experience and with X11 support being outdated, the GNOME Wayland session is now favored, which is getting better and better by the months as HDR support is finally being implemented and supported on Wayland. This change will align with Fedora's upstream GNOME's plan to phase out X11, and now we can expect X11 to be fully removed from GNOME in newer versions. This change here is just Fedora's way of aligning with other Linux desktop trends as it pushes other distributions to adopt Wayland as its default, only accelerating the end of X11 in favor of this more modern and efficient display server. They mentioned that there have been active efforts upstream for several years now to close out the remaining user experience blockers to dropping X11 session code. And that work will be completed with GNOME 48. The upstream target is to drop it for GNOME 50 and with it being disabled by default at compile time for GNOME 49. So they only have two GNOME versions to get this all done with a plan to completely drop X11 by GNOME 50. It'll be interesting to see how things go and if they're actually successful to removing X11 compilation completely by GNOME 50. But what's the benefit here? This aligns us with the effort going on upstream to retire GNOME X11 sessions. It also aligns us with KDE Fedora, like the Fedora KDE SIG and the Fedora Workstation WG re recommends and supports the Wayland platform for graphics. Significant news out of Fedora going Wayland only on GNOME. Finally, I want to talk about Rust-based graphics drivers for Linux, as NVIDIA has posted early patches for the Nova open source driver, which is built on top of Rust, a future successor to the, the Nouveau drivers, which will leverage NVIDIA's GPU or GSP system. This driver is being written in Rust and is currently in the early stages. It works with the RTX 20 series and newer GPUs that have the GSP, and in this Latest patch this series is a continuation of my previous RFCs to complete the first step of GSP booting. Running the FWSEC FRTS firmware extracted from BIOS on Ampere devices. While it is still far from bringing the GPU into the state where it can do anything useful, it sets up the basic layout of the driver upon which we can build in order to continue with the next steps of GSP booting, as well as supporting more chipsets. This is important as the Nova Driver represents an important step forward for NVIDIA completely open sourcing Linux drivers. This could help replace the outdated and unmaintained Nouveau drivers. While the driver is just at its humble beginnings, it is critical for improving Linux support with NVIDIA hardware, especially when it comes to open source. The fact that they're focused on getting things to work like the GSP on 20 series or above is exciting. We'll see how things continue with the Nova driver and whether Rust proves to be the best language for this driver, only time will tell. 
Let me know what you think about NVIDIA and them working on Nova open source drivers. And that's all the news for this week. Lots of great things happening in Linux as usual. Don't forget to subscribe below because you wouldn't want to miss another news update like this. On the way back up, make sure to smash that like button and catch me in a great community on Discord. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.